Okay, so the idea here is looking at what experiments we could, could try to detect WIMPs could do, and in particular how they could measure the WIMP mass. But in reality, all experiments have a background due to things like ne neutrons. And so this particular program is trying to work out how neutron backgrounds would affect your estimates of the WIMP mass from experimental data. And at the moment, it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. What's it, why, what's it doing? What's going on? It's falling over and going round and round in circles and producing silly numbers. So I'm trying to get to the bottom of that. So basically, at this point, I'm calling a sub, what's called a subroutine, which is sort of a black box package that does something, and I put in some input parameters, it crunches things away and comes out with some output for me, and it basically I'm coming up with some simulated data, analysing it, and it's telling me what parameters fit that fake data best, and so that's what's going on at this point here. To start with, they do look like gobbledygook, but then you sort of work out what the individual bits do, and you can very quickly sort of look at a line of code I guess very much like you'd look at a sentence of a foreign language and work out what the bits do and what sort of the net effect of that line is. I try and help out the people who are down the mines using sort of information that the people who are looking at the skies find is sort of it in an abstract sense, I think. And I'm trying to work out why it's going wrong by getting it to write out more output than it, than it normally would up until the point that things start going wrong. So at the moment it all looks okay, so it's obviously falling over later on. Would you benefit from a more powerful computer? Is, is that not really an issue for you? Or? Not really, because I mean the university does have some pretty good high performance computing facilities, so if I needed those I could use them. It's, this takes a few minutes to do what it's doing, but to set things up to run on a high performance computer would take a lot longer, so it's a bit of a pain having to wait while it does its stuff, but it's not as much effort to do it sort of on my desktop. Okay, so when in the sort of five ten minute gaps while I'm waiting for this to sort of run, I'm trying to sort out a trip to Norway in January. I'm going to a conference there to give some review lectures on dark matter, and I'm trying to get my flights booked for that. And it's turning out to be a little bit complicated because it's in the new year, and I have to be at Oslo Airport at a particular fixed time. So I'm busily searching lots of airline websites to find which flights will get me there at the right time without costing the organisers a small fortune. Basically got three hours to review the entirety of dark matter to particle physicists, so I haven't really thought too much about how I'm going to do that yet. Probably a mixture of sort of a review of the observational constraints on dark matter and then an update on particle physics models, but I haven't yet written those lectures. So it's kind of a state of the nation where it's all that type? Yeah, I think it's mainly aimed at uh, PhD students to give, give them an overview of the field. Why do they want Anne Green at the University of Nottingham to go to Oslo and do it? <laughs> um, good question. I, I think I got contacts in the Nordic countries. I spent a couple of years working in Stockholm. And also there's probably only a handful of people in the world who know both the astronomical side of dark matter and the particle physics side, and I'm sort of one of that handful of people. Down this there. is very much aimed at the people down, down in the mines looking for dark matter, it's sort of trying to work out what they'll be able to do with their data when they get it. And I guess this is particularly sort of apt because there's the LHC, Large Hadron Collider, that's about to switch on next year and there's some sort of complementarity between the physics it can do and the physics that can be done in the underground labs, so I'm trying to work out exactly what you can do in the underground labs and see how that, then people can see how that compares with what you can do at the LHC. Because dark matter is dark, you can't directly see it with a telescope, but you can see it by the way, well not see it directly, but detect it via its interactions with normal matter. And so the idea is that you look for it in the lab by looking by its very, very rare interactions with normal matter. And the reason you need to go down mines to do this is the rock sort of in between sort of your experiment down the mine and the surface of the earth blocks out all sorts of nuisance high energy particles that can co otherwise come into your experiment and mimic wimps, so that, that's why you have to go deep underground to do it. So the Bulby mine up in Yorkshire, where a lot of the UK work is done, they're um, about a kilometre underground, so they go down the mine in a really rickety lift with the miners when they go down for their shift, and then they're stuck down there until the lift goes back up again. So once they get down there, they've got a walk of a few hundred metres through dark caves with sort of headlights on until they get to their underground lab. They've then got a series of rooms they have to go through because it's got to be a clean environment and that's clean not just in the ordinary sense but clean as in low radioactivity so they have to get changed of their clothes and clean everything off and then they go into their lab which it's to some extent it's just like a lab above ground but just underground. 
Have you been down there yet? I have. I went down there a couple of months ago. It was very exciting and I didn't break anything. Well, I, I like an adventure, so I thought the whole thing was great fun. I think it probably gets a bit tedious, though, if you have to go down every day, because, for instance, there are no toilets down there, so should you need to go, you just have to wander off and find a dark spot. 